just at 10, January is National Human Trafficking Awareness Month, and several local agencies are hosting a conference on the topic tomorrow. Just last month, law enforcement in Beaver Creek shut down two massage parlors for illicit activity. News reporter Seth Bird joins us live in the studio after talking to a local organization about the importance of National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. Seth. Tanya Folks, the chief operating officer at Oasis House, who serves survivors of human trafficking, told me this Awareness Month for Human Trafficking is a great opportunity to have a conversation that is complex and hard to talk about. There's a reason we say human trafficking is hidden in plain sight. Tanya Folks with the Oasis House, which supports survivors of sexual exploitation, has been fighting human trafficking for years. She says oftentimes the cases she sees aren't what you think of when you hear the words human trafficking. For instance, sex trafficking appears very often as voluntary prostitution. So people just say, oh, well, that's just prostitution, and they go on about their business. According to the Department of Homeland Security, the definition of human trafficking is involving use of force, fraud, or coercion to obtain some type of labor or commercial sex act. Folks also says human trafficking is the beginning of sex and labor trafficking. So what's the red flag? Well, what's their vulnerability? Because if it's poverty, then it's going to be new stuff, right? But if it's child sex abuse, it could be, are they an alcoholic? That's a vulnerability. Are they already in the sex industry? That's a vulnerability. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says traffickers are not always strangers. They can be friends, peers, and family members. There was research that came out in 2020 that said, uh, covered 17 states, almost 1,700 cases, a third of which involved children, and the top four traffickers were mom, dad, stepdad or mom's boyfriend, and uncle. Folks says the Maya Valley has made strides thanks to their task forces in the area, but legislation could be better because of a loophole in Ohio law. That loophole allows people to operate massage parlors without a license as long as they don't claim to be medicinal or therapeutic. Experts say this could give opportunity for criminals to set up fronts for human trafficking. The city of Springboro wrote an ordinance that, that closed that loophole, requiring anyone offering massages to be licensed by the state. The 2024 Southwest Ohio Human Trafficking Conference takes place tomorrow at the Dayton Messianic Center at 9 a.m. In studio, Seth Bird, 2 News.